Hey YouTube, Mike that Tankless Guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is going to be um, diagnosing, removing, troubleshooting, or then replacing the internal check valve on a Navion NPEA unit. Okay, because remember the S unit is the unit that does not have the internal pump and the internal buffer tank or the separate recirc line. Um, but there is certain installations that you could have a separate pump, an external pump pumping into the unit, the cold water, where you would have that and you would be using other check valves, but we're going to um, touch on that in a minute. And then I'm also going to mention about a little little tip that we figured out on the NPE A2 when you don't have a dedicated return line you have the Navi Cirque okay so where inside the unit you have the internal external valve when it comes with the factory it's at six o'clock it's at external uh, excuse me internal so that means that the pump is only going to circulate internally within the unit and then push out hot water when the demand calls for it. When you have an external, so you're using a Navi Circ or a dedicated return line, I'm moving the valve right now, you're going to move it to the 9 o'clock. We're going to zoom in, we're going to look at it in, in a minute. Then inside of this housing, this, this polymer housing that's attached to the pump, is a built-in check valve. Because remember, this NPEA2 has cold water on the right, hot water on the left, and then three inches center to center from the hot is the dedicated return line where you would put your dedicated return. Now with other units, you would have to use external check valves because you're putting that return into the cold water. Here, you're putting the return right back into the unit itself. But that check valve is there to prevent cold water from bleeding over into the hot. So you get a customer, whether it's one of your installations or it is a troubleshooting or a service call you're going to, that the customer will turn the shower on or the sink or the tub. It'll get hot water, then all of a sudden it'll go cold. And it'll pretty much stay cold, maybe lukewarm, depending on the condition of the check valve. Now you'll get this with any type of exterior check valve or this interior. That symptom right there is saying that the check valve is not checking itself. Now, you can go into the diagnostics, which we're gonna do a whole video on turning this on and going through different diagnostics, but you can go into the installer manual and you can get outgoing water temperature. It'll tell you what the outgoing water temperature, and right there, if you're getting like 78 degrees, 75 degrees, you, the check valve is not good. All right, so where's the check valve? All right, let's zoom this puppy in. Now let's get the camera situated here. Okay, there's the check valve right here. That's the check valve. And to this side of it is the valve that gives you internal and external um, usage right here is the valve it's got oh they always have a little red marker on it so removing the check valve let's move this a little closer so we can see excuse the camera shaking remember we love live so we're not doctoring anything up here okay so now you can see perfectly there's right here is the internal, I don't know which way I'm going here, there's the internal external valve, there's the check valve right there. So the check valve, what you're going to do, it's, a, it's not even a quarter of a turn. Now I want to try to get this so that you could see it. You put your needle on those pliers in there, and you give it a push, and a turn, and a wiggle, and it comes out. And there's the check valve, right there. Alright, so let's bring the camera back so here's your check valve right here 
Now, there's the check. There's a little, there's a spring with a little plunger. And you can actually see if that thing is operating. Right now, it's operating because it's in. But you could have pulled it out and it could have been hot and it could be out. You want to push it. Now, there is a way for an emergency fix. If you have the parts box, so the, you have parts boxes for the NPE and the NPN. Heat exchanger, pump, uh, tank comes different, but everything else inside of this comes in this black parts box. Trust me, it's right here on my left side. Inside the parts box is a bag that has a new check valve. So you're going to replace the check valve. But just say you just started. You did not purchase a parts box. Or you just happened to run to this job and the parts box is in your shop. There is a way that you can do an emergency fix. Now, it's not guaranteed. And this was taught to me by a very old heating guy. You can actually take this check valve if you have some vinegar, or you can ask the customer, do you have some vinegar? Can you boil me some water? Put it, of course, don't use the pot there, but don't boil it with the vinegar. Have the vinegar separate. And all you need is like, like 12 ounces of vinegar. Boil the water, put it in some type of plastic, you know, plastic small two-gallon bucket. Add the vinegar, mix it up, and then submerge this into the vinegar. What it'll do is it might loosen up the buildup. Because when you superheat water, and that's what these tanklesses are doing, and you have like hard water, now we have real hard water here, you build up this calcium buildup, and that's what could be in there. The vinegar could loosen it up. You'll put it in, the people can have hot water until if you have to order it from Navion, you know, two day delivery, and then you can put it in. So, once you have it, like just say you have the parts box, and now you're going to just replace it. You have this two notches on it, which you're going to see two notches, and I'll show you down here in a second. But we're going to use our handy dandy little tube of heat proof grease. You're just going to put a little bit of heat proof grease on the O rings. And there's grease on there, you can feel it. So now let's zoom in again so you can see it. Give me a second. Let me get the camera. I actually got my son here today. He can operate the camera, but we needed a day to clean off our truck and clean off the shop. All right, there's two notches. There's one notch around five o'clock and one notch around nine o'clock between nine and 10. You're gonna mate up the two notches right here with that and then you're just going to push and give it a little turn you see look at that that's the turn see how my look that's the turn that's it and just give it a little bit a little turn give it a little pull to make sure it's in there now you want to take your needle nose pliers and work the internal external valve work it and make sure you're back to external and now your check valve has been rechecked <laughs> all right so how to prevent this well how to try to prevent it when we come and service these units the a model remember from my videos all you need is a bucket, solution, and two hoses. You're using the internal pump to circulate through the um, hot water line and the recirc line. Closing the sh cold water, closing the recirc, close because you got to put a dedicated valve, one, a single valve kit on there. And then you can just put your two hoses, put them in the bucket, go into your installer's menu, go into service, you have 30, 60, 90 minutes, push OK, the pump starts pumping, it'll bleed out the air and back into the bucket, and then just sit there for whatever time you decide you want to service it. When we do that, before we start it, we work that valve, we remove the check valve. Now we're also removing the inlet screen and then the pump screen 
which is directly below the pump here. So you have a screen right here, and everything on my units are, and it's identical to the cold water. So the cold water and the, uh, the cold water and the pump screen are identical. It has an O-ring on it right here. Remember, always bear in mind where the O-ring is. It didn't sit in there. You have an extra screen in the parts kit, so an extra filter. And again, the cold water inlet screen and the pump screen are identical. The only thing is you cannot remove the screen like you can with the other units. So you have to do your cleaning, soaking it, brushing it, and then reinstall it. So when we do that, we check all of that and we check the check valve. Hey, hey, check the check valve. <clears throat> we put it in the solution, and we move it around, put it back in. Then we start our circulation. If you, or if the homeowner has you come religiously every year, that check valve should last 8, 10 years. If it's really hard water, maybe not. So we actually carry three, we carry three check valves, just in case. We've not had one problem yet, but you never know. All right, so that was what we would do for the service, amongst other things, but that's what we would do with the service. Now, if you have, now you can add an external pump because if this pump is not handling the GPM, you have to add another pump. Like if you've got a whole bank of units or a big home, you might have to add a second, either Grumpfus or Taco or Bell and Gossett pump. But when you do that, you have to put in the spring-loaded check valve. Again, spring-loaded check valve, not clapper. There's guys out there like, I've been using clappers all my life and I've never had a problem with them. Well, you never had a complaint, I'll tell you that. Check, swing check valves are inherent to getting clogged up. The spring-loaded, because of the movement, cleans up whatever debris is in there. Will a spring-loaded check valve clog up? Yes, it will, but not as bad as a, a clapper one. And you're gonna get the same symptoms with this, but with this type, you can actually, when it's on and running, bang it, and even with a clapper check valve, bang it, and then go test it, and that is actually a quick diagnosis of what you can figure out if it's a bad check valve. So you will have external check valves. If you have a regular, just say 4,500, 4,000 square foot home, you have a dedicated return line, this pump will do enough GPM without a problem. It can do up to 600 feet of three quarter, so you, you're, and that's three quarter feet of hot and return back. So you'll have no problem with that. But like I said, there is instances where you will have to have an external pump, and then you're gonna have to use external check valves. So that is swapping this thing out. It's very easy. Now, this is my prop unit. As you can see, it removes pretty easily. When it's been in a house for two, three, four years, it may not be. You may have to give it a little spritz you may have to really fight with it. If it turns that little eighth of a turn, it will come out. If it's in like four years, don't even bother. What I do is I diagnose over the phone. A customer calls me, I call them back, I ask them. They tell me what the problem is, I ask them, how old is your unit? Okay, my Navion is four years old, five years old. Well, I know I better have that check valve in my truck because I'm not going to mess with the old wise tale of putting it in the boiling water and vinegar. It's not gonna work. You're gonna to have to change it. Also, you're gonna to have to get in there with some solution and clean the inside out. You're not using like a brush or you're gonna to have to do it with your finger. You're gonna to have to do it. You might be able to get a little bit of emery cloth in there to try to clean up with any buildup. Remember, it's a polymer. Uh, that stuff doesn't really, it builds up and it doesn't stick like it does to metal. All right? So just bear in mind that once you remove that, you're going to have to kind of clean it out a little bit because you don't want to put that new check valve in and it gouges the O-rings. All right. My other little tip. Let me uh, just grab, I think I, I, no, I don't actually have one. All right. 
If you have an A model that has the nat that you're installing the Navi circ, so it doesn't have a dedicated return line, so you're putting that Navi circ down at the farthest fixture. Well, when if this comes from the factory, there's a three-quarter plastic cap on the, uh, and I'm unscrewing it right now. There's a three-quarter plastic cap. Come on pretty big cap. So you got this cap that's on the dedicated return line. So what we figured out to do, now I'm putting it on the hot water, what we figured out to do is when we install an A model with a NaviCirc, we actually include the third valve. And we take a three-quarter brass plug and we plug the bottom of it. We leave the valve off. Because we pretty much, 95% or more of all of the units we install, we go back in service. I stress it to the customer. You're spending all this money. Do you want to keep this unit for 20 years? This is what you need to do. Like I say, you tell your customers, you have a Keurig coffee pot. Yes, I do. What does the Keurig coffee pot tell you? If you drink a lot of coffee or maybe not every six months or maybe four months or a year, it tells you, you need to service me. You got a $1,500, $2,000 curry coffee pot sitting there. Or whatever you have. Whatever you know how much you charged. So that's what I tell customers. So by doing that, you're going to enhance the performance of the unit. And, and that's why I stress that we do this. So I know when I go there, we did it last year. It's going to be easy this year to do it because it's been descaled. So with that separate um, valve that's plugged, we don't need to bring a pump anymore. Two hoses, a bucket, and solution. With some, and fill it up there with the garden hose, and now we use the internal pump. It'll work. It doesn't have to have a pipe. It just uses it through that third fitting. And pumps it through the back through the heat exchanger, back out the hot, back into the bucket. So for that couple of bucks, we add that, and it actually helps us when we service the units the, a year from now. Now, some of our units, we actually have it in commercial properties. We go every three months. All right, YouTube? So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you all for the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the questions. My email will be below. The part number will be below. Just remember, if you're, if you're certified level three with Navion and you're on their list, please make sure that you buy the parts boxes for the NPN and the NPE. Because remember, there's two different parts boxes. Now, in the new unit, the new um, non-condensing unit with, um, uh, which is the, oh God, I forget that. Oh, here we are. It's the NHW 700. That's this unit right here. That unit has, and it's on wheels, so we can actually bring it over to you. That unit actually has the interior exterior valve. Which is it's going to be a little hard because it's got the air switch in front of it. And then it's got the check valve. Same check valve. Identical. And that little boom. And it's got the third pipe right here. So this is a non-condensing unit that has recirc capability. And look back at my video that I did probably two weeks ago. I, I unveiled this. And I got something else over here that I'm going to quickly show you, and I'm going to unveil it soon. But you see that big box right there with my sweatshirt on it? That is Navion's natural gas-fired furnace. So it gives, um, it gives um, instead of like a heat pump or an electric, it actually produces hot water to make heat in a house and then in the summer 
it has an A-coil and it does air conditioning. But you'll see that when I uh, unveil that one. So, all right, YouTube. Again, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate and I greatly appreciate all the subscribes that I've been getting. Um, yes, the channel is building. So hit that bell, hit that subscribe, hit that like, share the video. Um, I do still, I still have the training. So if you're interested in my training here at the, um, uh, my studio, uh, just message me yeah, by email and then follow me on TikTok and Instagram, especially TikTok. I just did a three or a four part, just horrific installation of two of these units in a very popular restaurant here in town. We were there for five days and uh, just five grueling days to fix these units. They were just installed horribly. But look at my TikTok. I'll have everything down in the description below. Okay, YouTube, you all be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.